My name is Elizabeth Amy McLennan. I'm a teacher at WSO Gems Wellington. And today I'm going to be sharing with you ideas for student-led learning and critical thinking in the early years. Um, put your hands up if you're from the early years or you work in the early years or you're currently. That's great, because hopefully the main session for today is you can actually take some ideas away with you and try them tomorrow in your classroom. <laughs> Um, so we're going to start off just by looking at this quote. Um, the real asset of any advanced nation is its people, especially the educated ones. And the prosperity and success of the people are measured by their standard of their education. Now it's our job as educators to raise that standard. And hopefully today, as I say, you can go away to back to your school and take some ideas. Oops. Future generations will be living in a world that is very different from that to which we are accustomed. It is essential that we prepare ourselves and our children for the new world. Critical thinking and student-led learning is everywhere at the moment, and it's how we need to drive forward education. We need to teach children not just to learn, but to become problem solvers and thinkers. How do we do that with three and four-year-olds? How can we actually implement that into our classroom with these young, young children who are just starting school? Some of them just turned three. How can we do it? We can do it. And it's actually this system that I'm going to show you today is relatively easy. Um, so we're going to deepen our understanding of child-led learning and critical thinking and give some strategies. Can I just say that I thought this was going to be a lot more active session. I had lots of group activities planned for tables and it's not really worked out quite like that. So I don't really want to stand here and talk to you, but I'll try and make it as active as possible. Um, but we'll just work with what we have. We're all teachers, we can be creative. Okay, so what actually is child-led learning? And this is a question that has come up so many times. It's really actually hard to define. If somebody comes to you and what is child-led learning? How do you answer? Um, we were going to brainstorm in groups, but if you just want to have a chat to your partner, what is child-led learning? Just for a couple of minutes and we'll get some feedback. What does it mean to you? Okay, I'm going to stop there, sorry. Does anybody want to share some buzzwords or ideas or their, their thoughts on what is child-led or student-led learning? Yeah. Child is in the driver's seat. Exactly, the child, it's there. They are controlling the learning. Any more? The yeah. teacher sort of takes a step back and you listen to what the children are holding or what they're interested in, yeah. the questions they're asking, and then you take your lesson from what yeah. seems to be the most thing yeah. Like that. So we're not the drivers, we're the facilitators. We're there to facilitate. We're not deciding what they're learning. They have to take control. Any more? Provide them with the choices. Exactly. Don't tell them what we're learning. Let them decide. Is yep. there an opportunity then to let them decide? Pardon, sorry. Can... Is there an opportunity for them? Yes, them yeah. Um, so you all know, um, you know, it, exactly what you've all said. This is student-led learning. And I have summed it up into three kind of sentences that I believe how you can really make it in your classroom. Discovery of their own knowledge. So they're the discoverers. They're deciding what to learn. The second one, collaboration and cooperation is the most, one of the most important working together, cooperating together. Is it real life? Is it thinking about all the children? And most importantly, is it challenging? Is it actually challenging them? Does anybody want to comment on any of these things? So how, do you, how does this look like? What does this look like for research? 
And this is called the gradual release model. Student-led learning is not something that you can just start on day one and you know it has to happen gradually. We all know we have different classes of different levels, different needs. What works for you? What works best for you? And it's about slowly releasing the responsibility from you as a teacher to the children. I'll do it, we do it, do it together and do it alone. It's not going to happen overnight. Training them in the steps, giving them, auto giving them the ideas of how they make the classroom their own. I do, we do, you do. So two things today we're going to focus on. Your environment and your planning tasks and critical thinking through collaborative learning. It really, 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 really is all about the environment. 70% of your classroom should be just the student work. Have a reflection of a moment in your classroom or classrooms in your school. How much work is, belongs to the children and how much has come from the teacher? What resources do you have available? Can they go and pick them themselves or do you decide? How much is owned by them? What tasks are you giving the children? And this picture really changed me as a teacher. And I just want you to take a moment to look at it, think about it, and discuss it with your partner. What, what am I trying to show here? Yeah. Yeah. So often you go in and this is perfect penguins, perfect. But what are they learning? What is the learning in this activity? And do you think that three and four year olds would all stick them exactly on the same nose and the same eyes? No, this is not the children's work. This is the teacher's work. If you were a child, would you be able to come and say, oh, that's mine with the big nose? No, the children don't have any ownership of it. You've got ownership of it, or your TA has got ownership of it, but there's nothing coming from the children. Whereas this one, okay, what's the learning in this one? It's, yeah, they're all individual. They have thought. Where is the thinking? Did they have to think to make this? Probably not. Yes, they had to think to make this. They had to rip the paper. They had to decide where it goes. They had to decide how big or small it was going to be. They had to get the glue stick. Somebody wasn't holding their hand to do it. It's independent learning. Again, what is the learning in this one compared to the learning in this one? As a parent, would you prefer to go in and find your own individual child caterpillar or would you prefer to see the same one as everybody else? It's individual, it's unique, and it's learning. It's thinking, it's doing. Does anybody want to comment on that or say anything? Any <coughs> questions? So it's all about the environment. If you were in a, a three or four year old walking around your room, would you even notice that up there? Probably not, but then you can pick out your own individual ones. Well, actually, I think it takes less time to do this because how long is it going to take you to make sure everyone's the same? Whereas if you just let them go with the materials yourself, it takes me less time to do this kind of thing than this. Like, yeah, like just let them go. Let them make their own fish. It might not look like a fish, but it's there. You know, what is le learning here? Paper plates, are they all the same? What, what is the learning? What are they learning? What is the ownership? And this is all, if you start with your environment, it's a perfect way to carry on student-led. Even our registers in the morning, what's more meaningful? One that they've made themselves as a child or one that's been printed? It doesn't take long, but that's there for the year. That's theirs. And as they get older, they can write their name. You know, make everything about the child. Make it set. Your room should be centered around the children. Even your number lines, they make them. Everything's made by the children. 
And I know some of you might think, oh, it takes too long. Like what you're saying, it does take long. But you know, that took, what, a few, a few sessions? That's you for the year. You've got your number line there for the year. And that's one thing when people are in observing classrooms, they, they comment on every single student. So what actually activities are they doing? Are you actually getting them to think or are you just getting them to do? Now, my plan was, um, there's lots of different examples here of activities and uh, how you would do it, maybe not student-led versus student-led. Um, I don't think we're going to have time. You're going to work in groups and look at the different outcomes and talk about you know, which one is more beneficial to the children. At the end, you're welcome to come and look, but I'll just talk about a few examples just now because we don't have the space or resources. So the tiger who came to tea, what's more learning? They're completely by themselves, drawing, mark making, thinking, reading, cutting, sticking. This one, what is that? What is that to them? A printed out food on a paper plate. So look at the difference. What is the thinking? I won't go through them all, but this is one of my favorites. If you restrain children to a template, they are never going to exercise their creativity. If I hadn't given this little girl this A4 bit, A3 bit of paper and just given her this, I would never have known that she could do that. And it's about letting go as well. They can do more than what you think they can. And I've just got an example here to show you. Okay, this was in the moment, by mistake. Oops. Just listen to what she says. Okay, what did you make here? Can you tell me? A cupcake. A cupcake. And how did you do it? How did you do it? Yeah. Making my imagination. Your imagination? What's your imagination? So we'll see the difference in the quality of answer from a three-year-old. Thinking versus doing. UAE flag. Let them make their own flag. Don't. No <coughs> templates. No. Even if it's just a little scribble or a circle, it's their own flag. And obviously, as you can tell, my favourite, the hungry caterpillar. You know, I asked one teacher. What's the best one? And they said this one. I says, why did you? Why, why is that better? Oh, because it, that one's that one's messy. No, no, no. This one's the best caterpillar I've ever seen. This is by a teacher, holding their hand to do it. And if you can just let themselves go and think about the task you're planning and just let them be free, then I think it's the way forward. Where's my little? Sorry. Okay, going to move on now to critical thinking. Everyone's asking us to do this in our classrooms and everybody is expecting us to do this in our classrooms. And this strategy has been shown um, around different schools and people are trying to adopt it. And it's very, very appropriate for early years. So if somebody comes into you, your classroom to see critical thinking in action, this is a perfect way of doing it. I teach the children three steps. Problem, thinking, solution. Okay, Anna, tell us about these three steps. Problem, thinking, solution. And what is problem? Yes, and what's Mr. Octopus called? What's his name? Yeah, and he helps us 
Okay, so the whole class know these three steps. Now, obviously, this did not happen in a day. It took a lot of re repetition, but problem, thinking, solution. And it's about creating these problems. Now, I'm going to give you some problems. I want you to look around at examples, and then I'm going to show you what the end result is and how we got there. So think of your topic that you're doing. How can you apply problems to this topic? Um, I would like you to just, we're just going to try this. <laughs> it might be a, come and pick a problem and find the solution to that problem. So around the room are real life critical thinking problems that the children have had to answer. Um, so if you can pick one of the four problems and try and find the solution to that problem. Can we pick the light? <laughs> so what do you have? I have how can we cross? <laughs> take yeah, you can take it and take it back if you want. Yeah, that might be a good idea. If there's none left, then it's okay. <laughs> you can just <laughs> share with someone. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you can take it back to your seat. Anybody got the dinosaur? What's your problem? Oh, there's <laughs> one. Pardon? How do you get by with, um, so it's like FS1, they can't read that. Oh no, so I'll, I'll talk to them, but I'm just going to show you. You'll just do a visual picture and sort of. I'm just, the video oh, shows okay. each step. <laughs> I'm going to show you after this how we got to this point. Okay, so if you just want to have a look, um, the ideas that some children come up with. Oh, I just, sorry. <laughs> What do you have? I've got one here. Make a seatbelt for Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> so remember, these are three and four year olds. Higher order answering, higher order thinking, higher order questioning. How did we get here? I'm just about to show you. Uh, what happened to all the dinosaurs? Yes? Mud swallowed the dinosaurs and took them away. Mud swallowed the dinosaurs. Wow, OK. Uh, any more dinosaurs? Yeah. A sandstorm came. Okay, excellent. Any more dinosaurs? No? How can we cross the river in the jungle? Yeah. Stand on a hippo. What a good idea. We will sit on a big leaf. Any more jungles? And what was the other one? Uh, how can we stop the boat from sinking? Okay, that's a good idea. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Use sticks to make a boat. Excellent. Uh, this one here was across the river. A toucan bird will come and lift us and carry us across. So when you're starting a topic, you should sit with your team and think of as many questions as you can. How many problem solving questions can you link to your topic? So how did we get to this stage? It starts off, would you believe it, with four colors. Four colors. And in these four colors, you make teams in your class. And you train them to know what color they are. Red, you know, what color are you? And this is the first step, just training them to know what color they are, just as a game. And that might take you your whole half first term, you know what it's like. But train them to know what color they're in. We are training them to work in these groups to problem solve together. And trust me, when I introduced this to my staff, no way, they said, no way can they do it. And it was actually so much more easy than what you think. Please, 
next week. Print out four colours and just give it and try it. Oops. So this is illustrating the whole process from start to finish. boys and girls have gone and have Okay, so that's the first step. How I started it was I gave every child a badge around their neck with the colour just to make them recognise it. And um, bearing in mind there is a lot of ELL children. Um, we've got, I've got a child with Down syndrome, I've got two non-speakers, um, and they are all, if you watch, engaged. 100% engagement. So, any questions about getting them into their teams? Yeah. The, yeah. They love it and they know when they get into the group they hold hands and then they have a little dance. As you can see some of them took it a bit far. But you know, and that's the first step. Remember they're three and four. So, you know, getting them to do that, perfect. Okay, then getting them to understand what is teamwork? What is communication? How do we solve a problem? And I apologise for my voice in this video as well. It's very high, you know, up and down as an early years teacher is. Okay, we're Then you introduce the problem <coughs> and you try and make it as real life as possible. So when we're doing, can you cross the river, make a big river in your class, role play. Oh no, we're at the river, how can we cross it? Um, you know, try and make it real life, even though it's role play, it's real life. So they're actually applying that in the class. Um, you know, we talked a lot, you talk a lot about the problem. So the problem, how can we save the cocoon from the wind? So we had the wind sound effects, we're walking, oh no, it's windy. You know, make it real life authentic. Does anyone have any more qu any questions about that, that step, about creating the problem? No? Keep going, keep going. What's your idea? Oh, 
Okay, so to get to that point, practice in sharing in groups. I would just start off with tell your group your favorite color, finish activity. Next, tell your group your name. You know, start small. You don't have to jump straight to the problems. Just getting them used to getting into the groups and talking to each other. That takes a long time as well. Your first time will be a disaster <laughs> and you'll want to stop. But keep going because they keep, if you keep training, they, they will get there. You know, just give them something simple like give them a, an object to talk about. You know, some of them won't even know, you know, but, you know, just get them used to communicating together, to talking together, and then you'll get to that level where they all know that they can all share their ideas. So then they work together to draw the idea that they've chosen. Um, and usually, this took a lot of training as well. The first time they'll just all scribble. But you know, it's about talking them through the process. Like I said, the gradual, gradual release, I do, we do, you do. So the first time I would maybe draw it and show them and then say, okay, this is what we're looking for. Um, I would give two children like, as a starter, okay, you're the drawer, you're the colorer, give, and then you can gradually release that so that they, they decide who's drawing, who's not. Um, and, you know, as you can see, you know, they come up with some amazing ideas themselves. Okay. Um, because I had lots of group activities planned, obviously I couldn't do them. So, um, if you want to come and have a look at the just the comparing at the end, the different learning, thinking versus doing. Um, education is like a lantern which lights your way in a dark alley. Um, critical thinking and student-led learning is not easy, but if you know, maybe if you're going to try this in your classroom, maybe it will be a lantern for us. And I have I love this way of working, um, and it's kind of taking part and other skills as well. Um, just that basic four colours, just start with your four colours and see how it goes. And the student led as well, just think they can do it. How much, are they, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? How are they doing it? Um, any comments or questions? <laughs> 
or anything that you want to ask, yeah? Um, when you're choosing the groups, what is your choice of the groups for the children? <coughs> and it makes mixed abilities or do you cancel the high abilities with your It's group? completely up to you. Depends on your class dynamic. Um, I started mixed ability. Um, but some children may have more children with needs, so you might want to put them in one group with your TA. You know, it's completely up to you. Um, the goal is obviously at the end that they choose their own groups, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Maybe in FS2, but this is FS1. Um, so you, you decide how you want to group your children. Any more questions or comments? Okay. The number of oh. the groups, because I've noticed like some of the kids yeah, it just depends how many you might have to move them around, yeah. depending on who's absent that and day. Or yeah, well, or you might want to do it a different way. Yeah. You could do it any way you like. Yeah. But for me, having one pa paper is better because they all have to focus on the same thing and they have to learn how to share and they have to learn to listen to each other. Whereas if they all had their own, they would just do their own thing and there would be no collaboration. Um, can I just ask um, if you can put feedback to this um, on your uh, phone right now, you told me, but um, if you can do it at some point, um, just about the session. Hopefully you've gone away with some ideas. If you want to come and talk or ask any questions, I'm happy to. Um, if you would like to come and visit and watch it in action, I'm also very happy for you to do that. Um, it's in different classes, so you may you might not have to come, you might want to see how other teachers do it differently. Um, so hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.